Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and welcome to a Galactic Collision. This is Milky Way Galaxy colliding with its large neighbor known as Andromeda. This will actually happen in something like 4.5 billion years, and it might or might not look something like this. But in today's video I wanted to actually talk about something a little bit different. I wanted to analyze the idea of the effects of Andromeda, gravitational effects of Andromeda, that it currently has on our own planet Earth. Let's actually use Universe Sandbox and discover whether the Andromeda Galaxy actually has a lot of effects on us. Welcome to What The Math. Now the idea for this video is actually from Jacob Sternberg on Facebook who messaged me earlier asking me about what I think the gravitational effects of Andromeda on our planet Earth are. And in one of the previous videos I've actually um, analyzed the various gravitational effects that we get from things like different moons, uh, different uh, planets in our solar system, uh, like for example effects of Jupiter on our planet Earth. But most importantly, I've actually taken a look at the effects of Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole that is essentially at the center of our galaxy. And at a distance of about 26,000 light years from us, the effects are actually, well, very minuscule. So we're going to go to this planet I've just created by the name of Nustashi, and we're going to take a look at the effects. You can see, kind of see that this planet is slowly accelerating toward the black hole, but very, very slowly. But um, if I go under the tidal power, there's actually a little bit of effect that you can detect by scrolling down all the way to the right and you'll discover that it is 190 watts times 10 to the power of negative 33. In other words, it is a very, very minuscule effect, but it is there though. It's basically as if the Sagittarius A star, which is somewhere over there, we can't even see it, it's that far away, um, was influencing the atoms of um, various objects on our planet. Now this is obviously not Earth, but I've just created this because it's a little bit easier and a little bit faster that way. If, however, I were to place the moon around this particular object at the distance where the moon is, you would see that the tidal power has now dramatically jumped. It actually is something around 174 divided by about like a million. So before we had to divide by um, one followed by 33 zeros, and now we're going to be dividing by a million. So the effect is much, 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 much larger uh, from the moon that is. But now let's actually take a look at the effects that the planet Earth receives from the galaxies. And we're going to be taking a look at the closest large galaxy to us, which is of course Andromeda. And we're basically going to be looking at it as if we were to place it at a distance where it actually is. So this is our solar system. We're going to basically kind of zoom out, but the thing is, it's very difficult to uh, zoom out to the right. And we're going to go into galaxies here and place Andromeda Galaxy um, at a distance of approximately 2.5 uh, million light years away, which here is going to be denoted as about 44-ish Milky Ways. Or actually more like 46 Milky Way uh, in terms of distances because here one Milky Way represents the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy which in this game is about 55,000 uh, light years so right around here is going to be the Andromeda galaxy there it is now um, this is quite far away from us our own galaxy is just so, sort of over here uh, you can't really see it actually but um, there we are essentially this is what Andromeda would look like this is pretty far away. Now, is there any effect though? The thing is, if I were to just use Earth here, unfortunately it doesn't show you the tidal effect, so it's kind of hard to see if there's any effect at all. And because uh, our sun was already kind of moving a little bit, we don't really know if its velocity is increasing um, and if it's moving towards the black hole or is just being pushed and pulled by various objects. Like for example, Jupiter, that actually does have quite a lot of effect on our sun. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create this from scratch. We're going to go into a completely new simulation. We're going to create a randomly generated rocky planet right here. Let's make it as Earth-like as possible. Maybe give it some water and make it a little bit Earth, more Earth-like, although that's not really important. Most importantly is that it's basically now 
standing completely still. And now we're going to go away at a distance of about 2.6 um, million light years. And I'm going to actually just place the um, a black hole that's going to be equivalent to the mass of Andromeda Galaxy. We know that the total mass of Andromeda Galaxy is approximately um, 1.23 billion masses of the Sun. So instead of placing a galaxy of Andromeda, which is not actually precise, we're going to take um, a black hole, let's take a super ultra massive black hole like this one right here, and place it at a distance of 2.5 million light years away from our planet Earth, so right around here somewhere. We're going to name this Andromeda, and we're going to give it a mass of about 1.23 billion masses of the Sun. So it's going to be a very, very, very large black hole going to zoom into it for a second just to see what it looks like this is the black hole uh in terms of the actual size there is the sun compared to that black hole and uh let's actually compare it to one of the lar larger stars so this is betelgeuse and the largest star that we currently are um aware of ui skutai is about this big in comparison to this mega mega large black hole that i've just created so this represents the galaxy of andromeda in terms of mass and it's at a distance where Andromeda approximately is. Now let's go back to our fake Earth and look at that. See how it's already actually moving closer? It's already slowly increasing the uh, speed actually. Let's see how much effect this new Earth is getting from this um, fake Andromeda galaxy right there. I'm going to go into the temperature and once again look at the tidal power. So right now it says 273, but we need to count the zeros. So if you remember correctly, the Sagittarius A star gave us about 33 zeros here. So it was basically like dividing by one with 33 zeros. Here, let's actually do this again. And here it basically looks like um, this number 273, uh, 263, divided by um, one followed by about 36 zeros. So... That essentially means that it's a lot less uh, powerful, or I guess uh, causes a lot less tides on our planet Earth than does the uh, supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So in other words, instead of uh, affecting our atoms and affecting um, the molecules in our bodies, uh, Andromeda probably only acts on like really tiny subatomic particles. And even that effect is very minuscule. But nevertheless, Andromeda does have a little bit of effect on our planet Earth and of course on our bodies and of course on everything that happens around us. So if I were to basically accelerate the time here, within maybe um, a year or so, you would notice that this might actually, uh, in the velocity here might actually increase to at least a few centimeters per second. So we, uh, we might be actually moving toward Andromeda galaxy a little bit faster. And today we know for a fact that Andromeda and Milky Way, they're actually pulling each other toward each other. And this is why we are certain that in about four something billion years, 4.5 billion years, they will collide and they will very likely uh, combine into a very large mega galaxy. But uh, let's uh, run the time here a little bit and find out how long it will take for us to start moving toward Andromeda at around one meter per second. In other words, we want to see the uh, acceleration here. So this is what, 50 years now? We're still not there yet. And guess what? It's going to take us quite a long time to get to that meter per second. So I'm at what, 50 million years now. And we're gonna pause as soon as this gets to 1.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and here we go. It took us 116 million years of waiting for the planet Earth that's right here at a distance of about 2.5 million light years away from Andromeda to increase its speed toward Andromeda by about one meter per second. So that's how little power Andromeda has on us. But nevertheless, the power is there and the effect is there as well. So in that time, as you can see, in, that, in those 160 million years, this is how much our planet Earth moved toward Andromeda. And this distance is actually almost one light year. So this is actually pretty far when you think about it. So even though we're moving so slow, we've moved quite a lot toward the Andromeda galaxy, which means that the closer we get to it, the faster we'll move because there will be more acceleration. But I guess there is a bit of a takeaway message here. Well, there's actually a few. One of them, of course, is that Andromeda galaxy does have effect on our planet. 
as does everything else in that universe. Because there are so many galaxies out there, there are so many different galaxies around us, you can imagine how much different effect that uh, they actually cause on our bodies at all times. These effects are very minuscule, obviously we won't be able to detect or feel them, but they're always there. They're always acting on the subatomic particles, on various atoms in our bodies, and they're obviously changing things a little bit. On the other hand, this also implies that when it comes to larger effects, larger tidal effects or effects that we can actually notice, it's really just two objects that are important to us. One of them, the most important object, is of course our own moon that I'm going to place right here. So this uh, object right here causes quite a lot of tidal effects and quite a lot of various effects on our planet Earth. And as you can see, the speed actually started to increase dramatically higher because I've placed the moon. And the second object, the second most important tidal object, is our sun that's located at a distance of about one astronomical unit away from us and causes a lot less tidal effects, but nevertheless still causes some tidal effects on our planet as well. And, well, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. I wanted to kind of show you that other galaxies and other objects in space all have some sort of a gravitational effect on us. It's very minuscule, it's very, very tiny, it's almost undetectable, but it's always there. So even though we don't really feel it, we don't really know about it, even these galaxies super far away from us, well, technically this is not a galaxy. However, this is one. So even galaxies have effects on our planet Earth that might be located really, really, really far away from them. So. This, of course, implies that everything in our universe is kind of connected and everything has effect on everything else, including me having effect on you watching this video from my own seat right here. So I actually have a gravitational effect on you, probably a little bit more powerful than Andromeda has on you as well. In other words, my molecules are currently attracting you as well, as do yours, mine. And anyway. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't and potentially share this video with someone who enjoys watching science stuff or wants to learn through video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else interesting, something you may have not known and as always space out, bye bye. And what are we gonna do with Earth today? Well, you know what, maybe I won't destroy it today, maybe Earth will actually survive this video, maybe Earth will be just fine. Maybe, just maybe, I will not take Mercury and place it in a very strange orbit that will do just that to our planet Earth. Maybe none of this will actually happen and Earth will come out unscathed and alive. I don't even know what's happening right now. I think my game is kind of slowly freaking out. Wow, this is kind of cool. Look at that. That's a pretty neat effect. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.